there you guys I hope you're all doing well today I am very excited to finally get to share with you my calendula and rose self this is absolutely one of my most well-traveled salves actually I believe it is the most well-traveled and I've had a lot of fun making it I filmed the entire process from gathering the herbs setting the oil and then finally making the salve and its adventures across the country as well so this video encapsulates all of that. As I've been doing lately, the beginning is a vlog and the end will be a recap, which is sort of this. I will get into the recap more then. But I first wanted to sit down and kind of explain the beginning, the process I went through with drying the herbs for any of you who wanted to, and then we'll get into the vlog portion. So first and foremost, I gathered all of the herbs here actually at the beach. Calendula flowers grow like wild along the north side of the house and there are quite a few rose bushes around here as well. So late in the summer, I went and gathered up as many as I possibly could. And here we have a massive collection of calendula and some rose petals. All of which I will dry when I get back home. Then simply I set them to dry in a loosely woven basket on the kitchen table. You can do this on a screen or you could hang the flowers if you have them whole, but a loose basket is what I tend to do most and it is very effective. Although sometimes you do get petals falling through, but that's okay, you can just pick them up later. Only a few more days till they're done drying. It appears the basket may be a little bit too loose. Oh well, they'll be easy to pick up. A lesson for next time. When it comes to making a salve, I find it's best to use dry herbs. Sometimes it is important to use fresh herbs because the property that you want from the herbs is only going to be accessible while it's fresh. So something like a poison ivy salve or a plantain salve works best when you use fresh herbs. But this works great when it's dried and honestly it's better because it keeps them from spoiling for longer. So once the flowers were all dried, I gathered them up into a jar and covered them with olive oil. So here's the rose and calendula oil, ready to set. It'll take six more weeks until it is ready to be strained, but it's all part of the process. Then they went on a little trip with me. I was hopeful when I got to Virginia that I'd have time to craft with it there, and I wasn't really sure if it would be time or not, as the oil has to sit for six weeks. But I ended up leaving about a week before it was ready, so I started my crafts right when I got back here. Good morning. Who's ready to finish making us out today out of that calendula rose oil that's been brewing? Are you ready? All I need to do today is strain the herbs from the oil and then, well, get cooking. So let's get started, shall we? Oh, 
it is beautiful. It is a perfect infusion. I'm really happy with it. Alrighty, so got the oil all separated and now I'm just going to make the salve, which is pretty straightforward. I've done it a million times here and well, it's my favorite thing to do. So let's get started, shall we? Now just to melt this down and bring this up to temperature. Then I'll combine them and finish making this out. This is the point when it's most important to work intention into these spells. I find it's easiest done while stirring. You can really just use any method that works for you, visualization, feeling, or, well, <laughs> speaking. It just all works really well at this stage, so I'd recommend for any of you putting spells into salves to work it in now. We're getting there. Almost all the way melted down now. I just realized I did this wrong and I planned on making half of the oil into a salve and then ended up using all of it just on autopilot so I need to melt down the other part of my beeswax. Well, let's get started. Back into the pot they go. And I will be doing both of them again just because it's important this one stays up to temperature or the beeswax will just harden again kind of like it has up here on this. So I tend to really just do this double boiler situation because it's a lot quicker. They're such a beautiful color. I don't even know if the camera can do them justice, but wow. And they smell amazing. Very excited to see how it turns out. I still have a little bit of oil left over as I thought I would. Well, this is now a self, so uh, I will probably end up using this in other concoctions later on in this year. Maybe I'll mix it with some of the plantain that I have, but for now, this is what we have and it is beautiful. Alrighty, so let's get into the recap. Because I already discussed how to dry the herbs, I'm not going to go through that again here. Besides, I know a lot of you will be able to get these herbs online or at stores and you may not want to go through that process again. So that aside, let's get into the actual crafting of the salve. So to make this recipe, you'll need half a cup of olive oil, half an ounce of beeswax, a small scoop of coconut oil, and some dried herbs, calendula and rose. Whatever gets covered by that half a cup of olive oil, preferably. First and foremost, you have to set up the oil. Take your herbs, dried in this case, rose and calendula. Really, I just did a good mix of what felt right for each of them and filled a jar to the brim really packed in there with herbs. Then top it off with oil and allow it to set, shaking it every now and again, every time you remember, in a dark cabinet for six weeks. 
Once the six weeks are up, drain the herbs from the oil and cap it off. This can be set and used at any other date, but this is about the amount of time you need to have for the herbs to infuse into the oil for it to just have maximum effect. And so it's ready to work with now or any time within the next six months that you're ready to work with it. Personally, I was ready to work with it right then. And so to make the salve, it's pretty simple. Take the oil, I ended up messing up my recipe. This one I had intended to do half of what I normally do, so I will be giving you those directions, but the footage I got of it was kind of wrong because I just was on autopilot and kind of messed up my measurements. So to make this the proper way, separate half a cup of oil into a jar and a half an ounce of beeswax into another jar. Then place these into a pot of boiling water, or well, water that you'll bring up to a boil, and allow the beeswax to melt down and the oil to come up to temperature. You can do this in the same jar if you'd like. Personally, I found that this just gets it to go so much quicker, um, so I do it this way. Plus the beeswax, I have always just had a beeswax jar because it's hard to clean off and it's just convenient to use it that way. But it can be done in one jar if you prefer to do it that way. It just takes a little bit longer. Once the beeswax is melted down and the oil is up to temperature, take them out of the water and off the heat. Combine them, stir them together, and then add in a scoop of coconut oil. This is a step you don't have to follow. Personally, I think it makes the salve feel a lot nicer and absorb into your skin better, but it's up to you. then pour it into a separate container, allow it to cool, and cap it off. And there you go, a calendula rose salve. Calendula is a very healing herb, and rose is as well. Combining the two together makes a really soothing, beautiful skin healing salve that both holds magical and medicinal properties for healing. I think this is a great salve for taking care of dry skin, especially in the winter, and so it's really good right now going into that season. Besides, it's really easy to make, it's super accessible, and just fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video and following along making the salve, and I hope you make your own. Let me know if you do. Tag me in Instagram. I have all of that down below and I would love to see it. These are my favorite videos to make as you probably know by now. So I've been holding off for a while, but I'm glad that I got back to doing it again. As always, if you haven't seen my other channel, I would recommend checking that out. That's where I kind of vlog the daily magic of my days. I go into far more herbal recipes and experiments over there. And I know it's not for everybody, but if you can and would like to, I would appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbalism, profiles and some other fun things and it's really what keeps things rolling over here so thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a lovely day and i look forward to seeing you soon